maybe lining right up to the center here. All right, how did this one do? Oh, that one was so good. Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to another episode of Scrap Mechanic City, episode 12, I'm pretty sure it is. Now, before I get into this really fun build, I want to quickly mention, uh, which I'm sure you already know about, the new engine has been released on the beta, and at this moment, it's actually more so bug testing, uh, so we were all kind of anticipating something a little bit more, but... I'm sure that this is absolutely a step in the right direction for the game. I mean, ultimately, if we're talking about bug fixes and crashes and texture errors that people are getting for no reason at all, then no doubt I think the number one priority should be getting more people into the game and able to play. So I think uh, patience will be required. And with that said, because of the new engine and its nature, I'm still gonna continue on the city except in these module forms. So I think ultimately the end goal will be for me to be able to take all these modules and put them in the city and have a big city. And that is ba basically the best case scenario. But until then, I'm gonna keep making modules. So if you guys have any suggestions for these kind of city modules as you can see uh, in this case the bowling alley and the last one was a car crusher and impound kind of lot so if you guys have any more suggestions please put them in the comments i'm so excited to hear from you and i think these modules are just going to get cooler and cooler so i'm going to hop out of this seat and we are definitely going to go and have a look at all of this so as you can see it is of course a module here is the single anchor point right there actually so uh, I'm I'm ready to break it. I'm ready to move it into the city at some point. So let's talk about the outside here. This is probably one of my favorite parts here. As you can see, I made some bowling pins and made a big bowling sign, and they're all set up on a controller up there. And as you can see, they slowly just kind of shut, and they'll open back up again, as if the ball was coming in flying and smashing all the pins down. And these cars, I, I had this in the uh, impound lot episode there, the last episode, and I have fallen in love with this car. I love it, and I it's it's actually it's it's inspired me to make a new version of vehicle sizing for the city. And I'm thinking that the roads might even be able to be two lanes. I don't know yet, but these cars are so much fun. So I have a little parking lot for them here. And basically this is going to attach onto the city and the road will just turn into this big parking lot here. Uh, so let's have a step inside, shall we? Into the bowling alley. So before I get all the way into the bowling alley over this way, I'm going to quickly hop in here. So I, I really tried to think about, you know, my experience in a bowling alley and the things that I would see. And one of them was definitely some type of arcade setup. Uh, so in this case here, I ended up scouring the workshop for some arcade machines and I found a whole bunch of them. Incidentally, of course, these were pretty much all used in uh, Spy Cake's uh, mini city. Uh, he's got a great uh, kind of mini city going on, and it's huge actually, it's it's very immersive as well, so much detail. And these were made by his viewers, uh, they did an amazing job on these, and before I uh, carry on with like each one, I want to give credit to each person that uh, made them, so I'm going to pop outside, bring the lift up, and I'm going to give the honorable mentions because these creations are absolutely fantastic. So the first in the list here is created by Doge Lord, and if you don't already know, Doge Lord, uh, he makes a bunch of great stuff. I've featured uh, some of his creations in some viewer creation episode in the past. Uh, he's got some amazing stuff, so special thanks goes to Doge Lord for making this for Spy Cakes. And I might be kind of recycling it, but nonetheless, uh, I don't think there's any limit to kind of sharing these great creations. And of course, I'm going to be putting uh, links in the description for each workshop so you guys can have a look at them as well. So next here, we have an arcade racing game. Uh, so this was created by the Game Caver, um, a really cool simulator. Uh, it's got some nice detail to it, and the shape is really neat, and it's using the logic gates too, so that's awesome. Next here, we have the Pac-Man 
arcade machine. So this was created by Mindfish, and this was a Pac-Man arcade machine for in your arcade building. So this is for Spy Cakes, of course. Uh, great job, though. I mean, look at—I mean, you just look at it, and you just know it's Pac-Man. And these these simple designs are just absolutely stunning. I love that. So that's really good. So we're gonna move on here to the next one. So this was a big one. I kind of chose uh, a couple that would fit inside. Uh, this was created by Silver Lotus. Uh, so this is like an 8-pack that was created for Spy Cakes Mini City as well. And they are absolutely fantastic. In this one here, I ended up using, I believe, the car racing game, which is the number one on the left here. And the prize claw, which was number four right there. So some great work there and all around amazing stuff. So let's go and have a quick look at them inside the arcade, shall we? Alright, so here, this is the Pac-Man game. Uh, I'm gonna try and... Oh, see, so it does some cool stuff, actually. See, I love these, and you know, it's obviously not a specific game, but the fact that these things are actually interactive and you can press some buttons, it's really neat. So I believe this is the car racing game here. Uh, some more buttons as well. Oh, I, I don't want to accidentally change things. I feel like it wouldn't work in that case. Ooh, this one makes noise, too. Is that That's a game over there. And these... Oh, yeah, more light up. Now, this one... This one is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I can't remember the name of that one, actually. But this one is the... Uh, the kind of... What is it? Ski ball? Uh, it has a cool feature that kind of sends really quick pulses of light there. Uh, that's absolutely amazing. And this is a racer. Let's hop inside here. So... This one features a switch and a button as well for some really cool interactive uh, logic gates that light up there. And now this one is the Crane uh, Claw Prize game. Um, it's it's wacky. It's pretty wacky. You can do all sorts of weird stuff with it, and you can try and you know grab some prizes and hopefully you'll win them. Uh, but this is really neat. So all in all, really cool. I want to thank everyone for making cool stuff and putting it on the workshop and sharing it with everyone, so I hope you guys uh, don't mind me sharing it even more. So moving on out of the arcade now, we're gonna move into what I had to put in. I'm pretty sure a lot of bowling alleys have a pool table room. Uh, so over here, I created a pool table with some overhead lighting, and over here we have the pool cues for those pool tables. So this is using the new pipe pieces with, uh, I believe that's just the bolt up there, or the screw, sorry, painted light blue. So, I mean, you get the idea. It's really nice. I, I think in one of the past City episodes I had to use the large pipe pieces, which uh, didn't look very nice. So these ones are impeccable, and I put them kind of like an illusion here going through that bar. I think the pool table turned out absolutely fantastic, aesthetically anyway. Obviously, you're not going to be playing any pool on this anytime soon, unless they start adding some some new little spheres and stuff like that. Uh, over here in the corners, we just have some shelves here, so you can put your drink there if you would like to. Because, uh, of course, this would be like, you know, the adults-only section for alcohol, of course, but that's pretty much what a bowling alley is all about. Having a few brews and throwing some balls down some planks of wood. So actually, before I move on, this here is just like the front desk. This is absolutely cool, actually. I, I started using some of these angled pieces, uh, the 45 degree wedges, in, in some different ways here. So as you can see, uh, you, you get this really cool checkered pattern there too. And moving on here, you can actually see that you can create new angles and unpainted blocks. How did that get unpainted? I like catching things while I record, actually. There we go. So basically, you get these really cool uh, angles that you normally wouldn't get. So it's it's not like you have to put anything onto a controller. You just end up getting these natural angles, and they don't add any more bearings to the creation. So this moves here into the bar. So usually a bowling alley will have a bar as well, so you have a whole bunch of uh, kind of beverages ready to go, ready to mix. Uh, these were inspired by Scrapman. He has a cool ghost town, and he made like a saloon that had uh, some some beverages behind the bar as well, and it was, it was like the perfect way to do it. I can't even imagine a better way to make a bottle and scrap mechanic than this way right here. So Scrapman, you the man. That's awesome. Oh, of course, you gotta have a sink there too, actually. Gotta be able to wash your hands. 
So there's the bar with the seating as well as a few kind of like a little bit of tap kind of thing. I didn't want to put blocks in the end because they took up a lot of space actually and you couldn't really see. And there's actually a really neat sign up here. Uh, so I kind of wanted to make the bar stand out like kind of old timey. Over here, this is kind of like the changing area, locker area that you can change your shoes at. So obviously this is the spot here that you'd get your shoes, you know, they'd probably just have them all stacked under there. And you grab your shoes and bring them over here and you can change your shoes or if you have some belongings that you need to lock up. And right here, I had to do this in a bowling alley. I'm, it's like guaranteed, isn't it? There's a party room. You gotta have a party room. So I ended up painting this one a little more colorful than the rest of the building. And in here, of course, it's got a cool confetti ceiling. It almost actually looks like the pattern on a bus seat, actually. I just realized that now. That's kind of funny. And then here we actually have a cake on the table. I wonder who's... I guess it's a, someone's first birthday. <laughs> just a neat little thing to throw into this little building, though. And then, of course, sometimes you just need to sit down on a couch, so there's a couch over in this corner. Now, one last thing before I show the actual alleys. So here's just some bathrooms as well, so you got everything that you need. Uh, there's actually a urinal here. I made a urinal. So you actually have stalls and a urinal, which is kind of funny. Uh, but let's quickly run now. Run, run, run. Here we go. Look at this. This is the alleys now. So... This took some some time. This took me a little bit of time to really figure out how I wanted to do it. So let's kind of go through here. As you can see, it goes downstairs, so I added some kind of angled pieces like I did at the front lobby there. And these are basically just some benches on the opposite side. And you have three of them here. So there's six lanes in total, and there's basically three pairs, right? So here you can see I, I really wanted to put some detail in this one, so up above there, you can see there's a skylight there, and there's another one here, and a third one at this end there. So what that is doing is actually shining light down on the score table. So as you can see, there's score tables at each pair, and so you want to write down the scores, but you need a bit of light, so the light comes through, you can see it just fine, and when you step out of the light, it actually gets nice and dark again. So I think that's a, a bit of detail that I really wanted to put in. Of course, up above we've got the TVs, so you would be able to relay the score from down here up to those TV screens. And so I added the gutters here, so you can see it drops down on either side of every single lane, so there's gutters there. Uh, and they do actually cause a bit of an issue when you're trying to take these pins out. So I'm just going to quickly show you the back here. Uh, this is kind of like some retro design, I guess. I mean, looking at a lot of pictures of bowling alleys, they always have this reminiscent 80s feel. I don't know why. Maybe because all the bowling alleys that still exist have been around since the 80s, and they haven't changed anything, but these kind of color schemes and shapes and stuff, uh, they just fit naturally with that 80s kind of style that I was going for. So this way here, we'll end up in the back alley, so there's a little ramp there. Uh, so I wanted to, I, I mean, I would have loved to make uh, an auto-resetter, you know, so you press a button and it resets everything, but, I mean, I realized that if I was ever going to put this in the city, even with a new engine, I bet you that would be insane. There is an amazing creation that I have seen that actually does use, like, an auto-feed system that will reload pins and send you the ball back. It's massive, but it's really cool. And I might have to try and find that for you guys, because it's really impressive. So, I'm going to talk about setting up the pins in a moment here. Up here, it's just kind of like some storage. Uh, it, I kind of ended up with some extra space, so I just made a little tiny staircase there that would lead you up to it. And that's pretty much it for back here. So, I'm going to show you guys the pin setup now, so you guys can know exactly how to do it. So, as you can see, these are all kind of raised up and placed here. So these are actually attached to this block of wood. So what you actually do, I've left an empty one right here for us. So let me bring our inventory up. All you need is your wood and one of the long, larger kind of pipe pieces there. So what you do is I've marked each lane out with a box. And on that box, you will place a block of wood like so. And it's really easy. All you do is you find the second one in from either side, like so. 
and then you basically do L shapes all the way to the front until you get one right there. So as you can see, there's an L on each one, and then you do the same thing from this side here. So you'll make your L like so, another one, and you'll quickly hop around to the back side and simply place one right here in the middle, one on the left, one on the right. And now you have your 10 pin setup. The only reason why I ended up painting these ones was because I just wanted to blend in while I show you guys around. Now, so I'll quickly paint these white like this, so you get at least somewhat of a bowling pin effect. And all you have to do now is actually just delete this plank of wood. And there you go, your pins are ready to go. So let's quickly run all the way back to the front here. So I have my bowling ball. These are these are very multi-purposeful balls. So it's a golf ball, it's a bowling ball, it's a soccer ball. It's every ball that you need in Scrap Mechanic. And we're gonna use it to hit these pins down. So this is where the fun part begins. I'm gonna place it right here on that center point. I can actually probably, I, I, if I stick to my own rules maybe, I can line it up properly. There we go. So as you can see, I have some arrows just to kind of help you line up, and I put three dots in the back here so you can drop it on from the lift so you don't have to worry about welding anything. So what you'll need though, of course, is your hammer. So we'll pull the hammer out. So as you can see, I have it all set up, uh, and all the other lanes are ready to go as well. So let's, uh, let's play a little game of bowling here, actually. I'm gonna see how I can do, so... I usually like to crouch and get up right close to it here, let's see. Oh! How many did I get? I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six up, so I got four down. That's not bad. I am going to try and get a few more. I think I skimmed it off the top a little too much. Let's see how this one goes. I'm going to try maybe lining right up to the center here. All right, how did this one do? Oh, that one was so good! I almost got a spare! Oh, that's too bad. Let me try. I guess I got my third ball, so maybe I'll use this dot here. What if I... I move it over to this side here and line it up like this. Let's see what I can get here. Oh, this is looking good! No! The gutter got me. So as you can see, that's how the gutter... I mean, the ball won't actually go into the gutter. Uh, what the gutter will do is actually pretty much stop the ball and pull it because it doesn't actually go all the way through. Usually it just runs at this end here and it'll knock them down. Uh, I didn't want to make it too, too close because it would have looked kind of silly. Uh, so, I mean, that works pretty well. And the beauty of having all of these set up as well is I can quickly run right here and I can break those ones off like so and grab this bowling ball again, and I'm ready to play another game, just like that. I'll try and get some more. Let's see how this goes. Come on! Oh! That one, I, I had the right, the right direction, but I hit it the wrong way, I think. I think I ran into it before it went. Let me try that again here. Let's, uh, maybe I was too high again. There we go, maybe that's good. That's rolling! Oh! There you go. I might change the pin setup too. These pins aren't too bad. They're pretty hard to hit over, but I mean, as you can see, I'm doing some work to them. And I didn't want to make it so easy, right? So I figured if they were really easy to knock down, because obviously you can see I am not having the easiest time hitting them. So I think that's important for this build is actually having a bit of a harder time hitting them down. So there, I just totally missed that one. So this one I ended up getting... How many there? One, two, three, four. So I got six on this one. You know what? I'm gonna do one more. Let's try... I really want to get a strike. I have not gotten a strike yet. I think I know what I've been doing wrong. All right. Let's see here. Line this up perfectly centered like this. All right, here we go. Come on, strike! No! That was a... <laughs> that was... That was the worst one I could possibly do. I did get one, though. And you know what? That felt so real. I mean, I've bowled before, and let me tell you, that that was the real deal right there, actually. That is pretty much what happens in bowling. All right, I got two more balls on this set, and I think I'm going to have to probably give up on the strike, actually. Let's try this again here. Line this up. Like that. All right. Let's see. Right here. Roll! Oh! Jeez, that wasn't bad. That was not bad at all. So I ended up getting 8 on that one. So I think I got better and better, actually. Uh, so as you can see, though, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. You 
put them on the block, you break the block and they all drop down and you can easily uh, set yourself up right here and try and bowl a strike. Uh, so to clean up though, I just usually will destroy them all like this and in turn I'll just put the block of wood down and easily have them all set up again. I wonder if I can even get a strike like this actually. Come on, strike! I need one! Come on! Strike! Nope! Obviously, I was not meant to get a strike. So there you have it, everybody. That is the bowling alley for the city in module form, of course. So hopefully one day we will be putting all of it together in massive, massive form. But until then, I'm going to keep making these modules. So I hope you enjoyed this module. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see in this series. And make sure, if you haven't subscribed already, then subscribe for Endless Scrap Mechanic. And I'll see you guys in the next one.